this is a journey deep 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 into the face um, to find the pterygopalatine ganglion and wire it up with all the other things nearby so we're going so deep into the face that it's going to be really difficult for me even to show you where it is we're going by like a challenge i have skulls i have pipe cleaners i have i have that Pterygopalatine ganglion is one of the four parasympathetic ganglia of the head. So we're talking cranial nerves, and the cranial nerve for today is cranial nerve seven, the facial nerve, which I like to describe as the snotty, weepy, dribbly nerve of the face because it innervates the lacrimal glands, makes you weep, innervates the mucosa in the nasal cavity and, and that sort of area, makes you snot, uh, and it innervates two of the salivary glands, but not that one. And we've talked about that when we talked about the otic ganglion. So, because I don't want an assumption of knowledge, I'm going to talk about uh, parasympathetic and sympathetic and preganglionic and postganglionic. We'll get those concepts out first. Then we'll use our pipe cleaners to find the pterygopalatine fossa and show you one of the big nerves that runs in there, which will then show you where the pterygopalatine ganglion is. And then we'll talk about how the nerve gets from the brain stem to the pterygopalatine ganglion synapses, and then where those nerve fibers go off from then, there, that. All right, because the students have had their exams this week, it means, uh, They've had enough anatomy, which means I get the anatomy lab to myself <laughs> late on a Friday afternoon. Um, okay, uh, so the autonomic nervous system is the division of the nervous system that drives autonomic stuff, automatic stuff, stuff you don't think about, you know, homeostatic stuff, your gut, and, um, you know, regulates blood flow to your skin and heat loss and your sweat glands and your, all that sort of stuff, right? That, that, anyway. <laughs> Um, so that's the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system itself has two parts, mm, three parts, sympathetic and parasympathetic. The parasympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system is generally associated with rest and digest functions, like producing saliva, saliva and moving the GI tract and that sort of thing. Whereas the sympathetic division of the nervous system is associated with fight or flight stuff speeding your heart up and that sort of thing right and those are both motor they're both driving things they're essentially neurons that are running to smooth muscle smooth muscle being kind of your autonomic muscle that's what surrounds the gut and squeezes things through the gut tube it's 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 found squeezing cells to secrete to squeeze secretions out of glands and that sort of thing so sympathetic fibers and parasympathetic fibers are all motor they're all driving something uh, and they're all yeah they're they're forms of neurons. Um, now, the, what, the reason I say maybe three divisions is because there are the visceral afferents. Afferent means that they're going back to the brain, so these are sensory nerve fibres. Visceral means they're, they're carrying sensory information, they're carrying information back from the viscera back to the central nervous system, hence the part of autonomic three. Anyway, so sympathetic and parasympathetic. So that's what we see here. This is a model of the posterior thoracic and posterior abdominal walls and posterior neck and posterior pelvis and all the way up here we see the sympathetic ganglia the sympathetic chain the sympathetic trunk whatever your favorite favorite term is for it and in the, what um, a ganglion is just a collection of nerve cell bodies so here we can see lots of fibers running to so little nerves running to it little nerves running from it we can see these spinal nerves and peripheral nerves running around the body so that's the other idea is that a ganglion is a collection of nerve cell bodies in the peripheral nervous system so outside of the central nervous system so the pterygopalatine ganglion then is one of those and it's a it's a parasympathetic ganglion because what happens is that from the brain, let's get a brain, there is this layout, this level of organisation, this structure, which means that sympathetic and parasympathetic neurons, there is one neuron coming out of the central nervous system, so I've, 
So sympathetic neurons coming out of the spinal cord, parasympathetic neurons coming out of the brain stem, and that would be your preganglionic parasympathetic neuron, and it runs out to a ganglion, to a collection of nerve cell bodies, and then that first neuron, that preganglionic parasympathetic neuron, meets a second neuron, a postganglionic parasympathetic neuron, and there's a synapse there, a connection, and neurotransmitters get sent across that gap to convey the action potential from the first neuron to the second neuron, and then that second neuron runs off to its target. That is just a structural thing. So we see that happening here in the sympathetic stuff, and in the head we see that happening with the parasympathetic stuff in the four parasympathetic ganglia, which are the otic ganglion, which we've done, the pterygopalatine ganglion, the ciliary ganglion, oh, that's a fun one, and the submandibular ganglion, which is a very straightforward one. Okay, ganglia, sympathetic, parasympathetic, autonomic. We get, you know, you guys have probably heard this before, but it doesn't hurt to hear it again, does it? Um, if you knew all that, that's great, isn't it? That's a big tick. You understand this stuff. That's brilliant. Now, um, the first job we've got to do is find the pterygopalatine fossa so that you know where it is and where the pterygopalatine ganglion is. Ooh, purple. Okay, so, and then we'll add on, like, the root after that, okay? So, now, the... <laughs> and how many anatomy like I can just grab any model I want. So if we grab a big head, see what there's, there's big head, so you see where we are. That's anterior. That is the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve five, um, the main sensory nerve of the face. And it's got three big branches, ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular branches, which is what we're seeing here. And they're gonna run forward to carry sensory information back from the skin of the face and innovate the muscles of mastication, right? Now the second branch is the maxillary branch in here. And the maxillary branch is going to um, pass out of the cranial cavity through the foramen rotundum. Up here we've got the optic canal. Um, down there we've got foramen ovale. And in between we've got foramen Rotundum. So the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve, sometimes written as CNV, Roman numerals, little two, that is passing through foramen rotundum and where it appears in there, that is the pterygopalatine fossa. We've looked at the, the temporal fossa, we've looked at the infratemporal fossa. This is one step even deeper and smaller, and it's in there. That's the pterygopalatine fossa. And the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve runs through there, because it's gonna to run to this region here, gives off a whole bunch of branches that run to different places. The, um, the maxillary artery here is also going to run into, look, there's the trigeminal nerve there, there's the maxillary branch, the middle one there. Oh, has that come off there? Oh, that's all coming off. Um, that's not, anyway. Move that, yeah, okay. Um, so we've got, there's the trigeminal nerve, there are its three branches, there's the maxillary branch, of the trigeminal nerve running through foramen rotundum there. So deep in there is the um, pterygopalatine fossa. And you can see the maxillary artery also finding its way into the pterygopalatine fossa. So now you've got a good idea of a couple of the things in there. And in there is the pterygopalatine ganglion. Uh, this model is incredibly delicate and it seems to be falling apart a little bit. So that's where we are. Now, if we, if we look on here, um, we've got the sphenoid bone, the maxilla, and if we look under here, you see the maxilla is in purple, and then whilst most of this red here is the sphenoid bone, 
the bone here, the posterior part of the hard palate, these are the palatine bones. They're like, um, they're like really tall, really tall triangles, really tall pyramids going up. So they're flat bases at the back of your palate and they go up from there. Unfortunately, they're colored red on this skull as well. Of all the colors in the rainbow, we've got two red bones next to each other. <clears throat> but it's in there, it's in, it's deep in there that the pterygopalatine fossa resides. So if you can imagine this, the maxilla is like the anterior wall of the pterygopalatine fossa. The sphenoid bone is the posterior wall. And then those, those palatine bones that are stretching up into that space, they're forming um, the wall of the pterygopalatine fossa. Um, and that is, so it is really a tiny little space. It's very difficult to, to visualize. And then from there, that pterygopalatine fossa links to lots of other spaces. Like you can get to the pharynx from there, you get to the nasal cavity from there. You can get up into the orbit from there and so on and so on, right? It's a real little tiny junction box. Okay, all good so far? Yeah? Right, okay, let's nail the nerves onto that. Let's wire this puppy up. Now, um, the Facial nerve, cranial nerve seven, comes out of the brainstem with cranial nerve eight, the vestibulocochlear nerve, and they are going to run together to go into the, into the internal acoustic meatus, um, which is in, in, the, in there. So the internal acoustic meatus it allows those nerves to get into this petrous part of the temporal bone here. And inside there are the structures of the, the inner ear and the middle ear and that sort of thing. Obviously the vestibular cochlear nerve wants to go in there because it's doing vestibular and cochlear stuff, right? Hearing and balance, you know that stuff's in there. But also this is where the facial nerve goes and it finds some interesting ways out of that space. Now, I don't think this is controversial or anything, but Often when one looks at the facial nerve running from the brainstem into the internal acoustic meatus, we find that it's kind of running as two nerves. There's the facial nerve and then the nervous intermedius or intermedius. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's one nerve, it's got two bits running together. And the nervous intermedius runs in through there and gets to the geniculate ganglion. Now the geniculate ganglion is not something we need to worry about today. It's involved in taste. We're not doing taste. Um, but the geniculate ganglion is in here. And because we're thinking about the pterygopalatine ganglion, all we're worried about today are the preganglionic parasympathetic neurons of the facial nerve that are going to run to here and to the lacrimal gland up here to make tears. That's what we're focusing on. So these preganglionic parasympathetic neurons run within nervous intermedius through the geniculate ganglion. They're, just, they're not synapsing, they're just going through it, right? There's a whole bunch of other cells doing things there. They don't care, they're just straight through. And then they give off what is, I think, considered the first branch of the facial nerve, which is the greater petrosal nerve. And very nearby, the internal carotid artery is, is running up here, right? And one way that sympathetic neurons travel throughout the body, because they do travel, they get everywhere, is that they follow the arteries, they follow the big arterial blood vessels. So the internal carotid artery is covered in like this fine filigree webwork of, of sympathetic neurons here. And some of those sympathetic neurons jump off the internal carotid artery and run as the deep petrosal nerve and meet the greater petrosal nerve. Now just think, right, while we're here, this is the petrous part of the temporal bone. So whenever we're talking about petrosal nerves, we're talking about nerves around here somewhere, right? And they're finding their way around in and out of that bony space. So the deep petrosal nerve, which are postganglionic sympathetic neurons, because they've already, they've already gone through their ganglion there. So they're running from a ganglion up here with the blood vessels, that makes sense. Postganglionic sympathetic neurons jump off 
the internal carotid artery run as the deep petrosal nerve, deep petrosal nerve, and they meet the great petrosal nerve, which is a collection of preganglionic parasympathetic neurons, and then they run together as the nerve of the pterygoid canal, which runs through the pterygoid canal. And when it comes out of the pterygoid canal, it is in the pterygopalatine fossa. So those preganglionic parasympathetic neurons of the facial nerve, they get to the pterygopalatine ganglion, that collection of nerve cell bodies, they synapse with postganglionic parasympathetic neurons, which then run off to their various targets. Now those various targets also will need sympathetic neurons. So those sympathetic neurons that got to the pterygopalatine ganglion, they just run through it. They're not synapsing, they're just whoo, going through it because this is just wiring. It's convenient and they're going to follow the same little nerve routes that the parasympathetic neurons are going to take to get to their target organs, namely that one, that one, that one. All right? If, if you kept up with that, you're doing really well. So from there, from the pterygopalatine ganglion, there are a number of small branches. Uh, we have a pharyngeal branch finding its way down to the, to the pharynx. We have a sphenopalatine branch and greater and lesser palatine nerves, which are running out to the nasal cavity, um, which are going to innovate. They're going to send fibers to the mucosa, the secretory mucosa of the palate, of the nasal cavity, and of, of the pharynx, all those secretions, you know, snotty stuff, right? That sort of thing. So that's what happens next. The sympathetic nerves and the postganglionic parasympathetic neurons run in those nerves to those spaces. And then some of those fibres run up to the lacrimal gland. Um, here's the lacrimal gland. So they run up to the lacrimal gland here and they can make this gland secrete tears. I mean, you're always secreting some tears, right? Because you need to keep your, your eye moist. Um, but they can make it secrete more tears in response to an irritant pollen in my case recently, um, or sadness, like realising you don't understand any of this and you have to do it all over again. <laughs> Hopefully that's not the case. Um, also, don't forget that tears can run, they run across the eye and then they run through a hole to get into the nasal cavity. So tears actually run into your nose, which is why you become such a big mess when you're crying. Anyway, the way in which postganglionic parasympathetic neurons get up to the lacrimal gland is somewhat involved and complicated. They run with other nerves, right? Uh, maybe we'll look at that whenever we look at the um, ciliary ganglion in the future. But that's it. I think that's it. That's the pterygopalatine ganglion. That's its location. Um, that's how the parasympathetic neurons of the facial nerve get there and run through it and what they do. Um, the other thing, of course, to remember, the other thing to throw on top of that is that um, just because it's a ganglion, it doesn't mean that everything that runs through it synapses with another neuron. So that, as I said, yeah, the parasympathetic set neurons, they meet another neuron, they synapse at the ganglion. This is why it's a parasympathetic ganglion. But the sympathetic neurons, they just run straight through. Their, their axon just goes vroom, straight through without any connections. And it's the same for, um, sensory nerves of so sensory fibers of the trigeminal it's not helping uh, so we've got all these um branches of the maxillary nerve the br that branch of the trigeminal um, nerve running back through there as well so some of those fibers will run near to or through the pterygopalatine ganglion these are somatic sensory neurons because this stuff is somatic right you can they're just going to run through that synapse so don't get thrown by that the pterygopalatine ganglion is a collection of nerve cell bodies where preganglionic parasympathetic neurons meet with postganglionic parasympathetic neurons and let the facial nerves functions, let, let the fibres of the facial nerve do their 
job, right? It's just structure. Isn't it cool though? Isn't it just wonderful how amazingly detailed that is? The fact that it exists, the fact that anybody was able to, to work that out, to dissect it and, and find all that, isn't it just... So please, if you've got all of that, go and celebrate with a cup of tea. Oh, maybe we should lay off the head and neck anatomy for a week. Um, okay, see you guys uh, next time.